Welcome to a guided tour of light fields. A photograph records the rays of light coming toward a single viewpoint. It's a wonderful record of the scene, but it's two-dimensional and doesn't let you change your point of view as you move your head back and forth. A stereo photograph contains two views of the scene, one for each eye, which allows us to perceive depth. But it still doesn't let us shift our view as we move our head, and doing so might even make the scene distort unnaturally. A light field uses an array of cameras to record all the rays of light coming into a volume of space, which allows us to display the correct perspective of the scene for any point of view looking through the volume. Keep looking forward and try moving your head back and forth to see things shift in the scene. If we view a spherical light field from inside the volume, we can see properly rendered 3D views of the scene in every direction and they shift in perspective as we move left and right, forward and back, or up and down. In this light field of a living room set at the LA YouTube space, we can also see shifting reflections the light field brings to life in the mirror to the right, and the metal drum on the mantel to the left. So take a moment to look around, take note of the surrounding white circles which can help you stay inside the light field volume, and get ready to explore a few interesting places using light fields. We'll start in the front yard of the Mosaic Tile House in Venice, California. Over two decades, artists Sherry Pan and Gonzalo Duran sculpted and decorated their home with fragmented pottery from their kiln, found objects such as coffee mugs and porcelain figurines, and bottles melted into flattened slabs of glass. They also embedded shards of broken mirror into the mosaic, which shift their reflections as you move back and forth. Even the home's interior is covered in decorative tile, including the front living room, which serves as a gift shop for sharing Gonzalo's smaller works of art. Moving to a very different style of home, we're now in the entryway of the Gamble House in Pasadena, California, often called America's Arts and Crafts Masterpiece. The entryway receives light from the front door's leaded glass design of a Japanese black pine, and the staircase to the left exemplifies the home's exquisite teak and mahogany joinery. The living room shows how architects Charles and Henry Green combined Western and Japanese design elements and achieved harmony through a unified design of the architecture, furnishings, and even the light fixtures. This light field in the dining room makes it easy to notice the luster of the finished wood and the tile inlay in the mantel over the fireplace. This final Gamble House light field in the butler's kitchen shows sharp reflections in the white tile, dull reflections in the metal sinks, and shiny reflections in the turn-of-the-century tea set to the right. Moving to St. Stephen's Church in Granada Hills, we're now looking up to Roger Derrick Carrere's Light of the World stained glass window, originally displayed at the 1964 New York World's Fair. If you lean left and right within the light field volume, you can see the sun move behind the differently colored pieces of glass, just as it would in real life. Looking to the heavens in a different way, we're now in front of the Space Shuttle Discovery at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia. It's the third of NASA's five shuttles and flew to space 39 times from 1984 to 2011, more missions than any other spacecraft. Discovery's body is covered in white quilted insulation blankets and its underside and nose in black ceramic tiles both necessary to protect the shuttle when re-entering Earth's atmosphere at up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Discovery's main engines burned liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen drawn from a huge external fuel tank mounted to the underside of the orbiter. With additional thrust from solid rocket boosters beside the tank, the vehicle could reach orbit in just eight and a half minutes at over 17,000 miles per hour. Discovery's spacious cargo bay carried the Hubble Space Telescope and other large payloads to space. In front of us, the external airlock could be configured for docking with space stations or used by astronauts for spacewalks. 
Up and to the right is the Orbiter Boom Sensor System, an extension for the Canadarm Robotic Manipulator System, which would normally be cradled on the opposite side of the cargo bay. Floating through the airlock takes us to Discovery's mid-deck, where its typical crew of seven would live, work, eat, and sleep. To the right are the crew lockers, and to the left is the airlock leading back to the cargo bay. The curved beam overhead is part of a crew escape system added to the fleet after the loss of Space Shuttle Challenger and its crew. The ladder leads to Discovery's flight deck. The commander sat to the left, the pilot sat to the right, and two more astronauts could ride behind them while others flew seated in the mid-deck. The commander and pilot each had a joystick to fly the ship as a glider when returning to Earth, and another hand controller for maneuvers in orbit. Behind us is the aft flight deck control station, with controls for performing docking maneuvers and manipulating the Canadarm, and windows to see into the cargo bay and above the ship. The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum staff was not only gracious enough to provide access to the inside of this priceless national treasure, but to pose for a group photo below the entry hatch, next to where the Canadarm is displayed. To record this light field, they held still for 30 seconds, keeping their eyes on the center of the light field rig as the cameras rotated around. If you lean back and forth, you may be able to notice that you can move into and out of each person's line of sight. Back at the Mosaic Tile House, Sherry Pan and Gonzalo Duran also posed for a few light field portraits. In this light field at sunset, Sherry and Gonzalo fix their gaze looking toward each other. If you lean to the left, you can see the sun disappear behind the bush, and you might also catch Gonzalo starting a smile. In this light field on the front porch, Sherry and Gonzalo followed the camera array with their eyes as it went around producing the effect of them looking toward you rather than through you as you lean left and right in the scene. Paintings and photographs can also give the sense of a subject looking back at you as you move, but in a light field, your perspective within the scene can change as well. In this final light field, Sherry and Gonzalo gave their attention to each other rather than to the camera, surrounded by the environment of their own creation. We hope you've enjoyed this short tour with light fields, and we'll visit the gallery where you can see these and a few more light fields for as long as you'd like. Where would you like light fields to take you next? <laughs>